how to listen to Wagner. So you're interested in Wagner? No, not that one. Thousands of people are always asking me. <laughs> Clearly you must be an expert because of your cheap anime hair. So so tell me, tell me, how do I do it? I'm so desperate to, to listen to Wagner. I just don't know the way. I just don't know the way. Um <laughs> This happens all the time. Um, you know, I think because I think because for a lot of people I think because a lot of people only know Wagner through orchestral excerpts. So when they come and listen to the real Wagner, it sounds totally different. They're just kind of like, what? And to them, it just sounds like a bunch of tuneless noise. So I always just thought of Wagner as like, oh yeah, that guy who wrote Ride of the Valkyries and the Wedding March. And, you know, and then when I heard like, proper Wagner for the first time, I was like, wow, this is like the most amazing music that I've ever heard. Like, where has this been all my life? It's like, well, it was right there, but no one ever told me. No one was ever like, go listen to Wagner, you idiot, like the proper Wagner. So if you want to get into Wagner, there are basically two ways, like the easy road or the hard road, I guess. <laughs> And it basically depends on whether or not your listening comprehension can handle Wagner or not. So a lot of people will say that uh, you need to listen to some of like the easier operas first and then you sort of work your way up. But in my opinion, like if you're going to spend five hours listening to an opera or something, you know, you might as well, you know, start at the deep end. Like... I think some people think you have to go to Wagner University or something in order to be able to understand his operas. But you really don't. Like, it's just music. You just listen to it and you like it or you don't. But again, I say that because that's what I did. Like, the first Wagner opera I listened to was Tristan and a Soul. Uh, and oh, just boring. Just I'm going to say all of these names wrong. So, <laughs> yeah. So, because I like that style of music straight away. I started listening Trist with Tristan and I had no problems and then I just listened to the rest of them from there. Uh, but some people uh, can't do that. So in that case, uh, then you start with an earlier opera. Okay, the reason for this is that Wagner's operas are based around this word that I can't pronounce. <laughs> This was Wagner's artistic vision. So basically what this means is just like integration of all the arts. So like if Wagner were alive today, he would basically be a movie director, right? So he wanted uh, everything to like work together. So music, the text, the drama, the, you know, scene painting, e everything just to, to just all be like one harmonious unit. Uh, <laughs> so so um, the more mature is an opera is the the more it will be like that philosophy right whereas his earlier operas are more like the other operas of their time period opera originally um it was very like um segmented i guess it's sort of like today with musicals uh you know how you have kind of like set pieces uh so so operas will have you know, it's a bit of someone talking or someone singing, and then there'll be like soprano aria, and then there'll be a little bit of something, and then there'll be a trio, or you know, it would be written for one specific really amazing soprano or something, so they just wanted to show her off, uh, some, something like that. And then the lyrics would be, again, like today, kind of, you know, verse, chorus, you know, and then they would just repeat. Uh, so stuff like that. I mean, that's not true of everything, but. So Wagner didn't want to to do that. He wanted um, his operas to be, I guess, more like a symphony, um, where instead of having everything kind of in chunks, you, you just have this sort of continuous uh, flow, uh, right? And that's why his operas uh, can sound tuneless, because they don't... Um, 
he wanted the voice to just kind of be like one part, like, you know, like one part of the symphony. So if you if you take away all the other parts, it, it doesn't make sense, uh, Wagner style, uh, which is a continuous web of music and very sinuous, sinuous, very, very sinuous <laughs> type of music. Um, Wagner, we have, uh, so we have like the early period and the middle period and the mature period. So basically, um, early works, just no, like forget about them. Don't, uh, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> and uh, his uh, last opera, Parseval, again, just no. Um, yeah, you, you actually need to go to Wagner University in order to make sense of that one. <laughs> So let it go. Um, anyway, uh, so basically we're dealing with middle middle period, which is Tannhäuser, the Flying Dutchman, and Lohengrin, and then mature period is uh, Tristan, uh, the Meistersingers, and the Meistersinger, the Meistersinger, and the Ring. So if you're gonna go the hard way. I would say start with Tristan or The Ring. Meistersinger is really good, but I think it has more like value if you heard at least one Wagner opera first. Uh, and The Ring it kind of takes you through the process as it goes along, so it gets increasingly more intricate as it goes along. I, people, people gonna think I'm crazy for just suggesting Wagner noobs just jump straight into The Ring, but like, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? I'm a rebel. Um, any, um, um, okay, so wait, where am I? The ring has uh, four parts, um, and it's 16 hours long, so you may be asking, is any of this skippable? A lot of people will say, skip Das Rheingold, um, the Rheingold, because it's kind of like a prelude. Um, uh, you know, and, eh, I mean, but I still just think if you're gonna listen to The Ring, like, you should just, just, like, listen, you should just, yeah, just do it, just, just do it, just do it. The early operas, you can start with any one of them, really, it doesn't really matter. A lot of people like Lohengrin, um, that would, for a lot of people, that's like their gateway Wagner. <laughs> I think because it's probably the one that has the best balance between the um, the old style and the new style. Like for people who don't like the later operas, Lohengrin tends to be their favorite overall as well. So yeah, okay. Um. And now that I've done that, I've got some things you need to know before listening to Wagner operas. Um, opera plots make no sense. Okay, opera plots make no sense. <laughs> this is not just in Wagner, but like in all of opera, right? It's like with Shakespeare, right? Although I have to say Shakespeare plots usually make a lot more sense than opera ones. Uh, like, you don't go to Shakespeare for the plot, you go for the language, or whatever. You don't go to the operas for the plot, you go for the music. So the music is going to take its sweet time while the plot goes nowhere. Yeah, oh, in the ring especially, um, very little of that makes any kind of sense at all. But just, but it's okay, because the music is solid anyway. In addition to the plot making no sense, the, the you know, the morality is questionable. Usually, I mean, the moral of Tristan and Isolde is straight up like adultery is good. That's it. There's no like nuance. It's just plain cheating is good. Anyway, so this was a known like effect of Wagner even back in the day, right? So people, they would tell people not to go watch Tristan and Isolde because people would apparently they'd like have fainting fits and, you know, then they, you know, go home and decide to cheat on their husbands because they were influenced by, like they thought Wagner's music had like evil magic, evil magic and it would like control people's minds, right? I mean, that's true of like, 
I mean, that's been said about many musicians throughout history, right? But, I mean, like, I see where they're coming from. Because, like I said, sometimes he will be presenting a point of view that's, like, utterly repellent. And, you know, but because the music is so good, you, you kind of sort of like, eh, you know, it's quite uh, hyp hypnotic, I guess. I'm just saying this because, uh, you know, if you're not a Wagner fan, right, and uh, you don't like the music per se, you're going to start watching one of these operas, something really weird and gross is going to happen and you'll just be like, what? Ew, why did you say, tell me about that? And I'm like, just, I told you he's, he's, he's got, he's, he's a strange man. Um, okay. Uh, read the words. <laughs> so with a lot of operas, the words are kind of incidental. So yeah, it's a really different listening experience. I think if you read the words, so read the words. <laughs> Um, next, don't listen to it as background music. So I say this from experience uh, because sometimes when I have a hard time with a piece of classical music that I'm in the background and then like, subconsciously it kind of gets in your mind or something and then the next time I listen to it properly, I'm like, oh yeah, now I get it. Like, or that kind of thing. I don't know. So I tried doing that with uh, Wagner in the past with the, the infamous Parseval. And I must have listened to that, yeah, like at least 20 times or something, just in the background. Years later, for the first time, I was listening to it like, what? Like, I'd never heard this before. It was completely new to me because, <laughs> because I listened to it in the background. Anyway, you can't do that. Um, you have to focus. 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 This is not true of all music. Again, some music... In fact, a lot of music is great for background stuff. A thing is light motifs, leet motifs, light motifs, light light motifs, light motifs, light motifs. <laughs> I'm not sure that this word was actually used by Wagner, but it's become pretty um, synonymous with his name that's redundant pretty much everyone else does now right um i'm gonna call them motives or themes because i'm a rebel so uh these are like little musical bits and pieces which uh represent certain things or ideas so you might have one that represents uh like a sword or a tree or something like that well, see, like, okay, normally uh, the musician can express certain feelings like sadness and regret and whatever, right? But to s express a specific concept like a sword or a tree, uh, you know, you, you can't really do it. Um, so because Wagner's operas, they lost that traditional structure, he needed something else to kind of bind everything together. And that's why he, he used this uh, system, 